Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of NetHeads, and it's time to dip into that little thing we like to call the app of the week, trying to uh, extend a little help out there. Now, last week, we talked about Alarmy. This week, we're talking about a new one, and I can definitely tell you, I know this one is available in the iOS uh, store as well as the App Store in, on Google Play. And uh, this isn't a new app, really. People have probably heard about this, except for my co-host, who actually told me I have no idea what that is. What is it, Will? It's Waze, W A Z. But you didn't even know what Waze was either, right? I don't know what Waze are. I know okay. I, I know what waves are. I don't know. V. I want to know what the way is. I want to know what Waze is. And you know what, Trent? I'm going to tell you. Uh, Waze actually, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing. It's a GPS, is what it is. Okay, so it's a, it's a GPS that you can put on your smartphone. Uh, but the great thing is, it's a community GPS. So, like, let's say you're driving along and suddenly you hit a slowdown. You can do a gesture or you can, you know, if you've got your, whatever your laws are in your state, but if you can touch the screen, you could report the accident and let's oh, say, okay. I'm, and let's say I'm a half an hour down the road, Trent, um, uh -huh. and, and I get notification. Oh, look, something has changed in this case. Let's go ahead and tell you to go this other, uh, we're going to change your course. We're going to make life a little better for you. That's what Waze is. It's, it's kind of like a community reporting system. So that way, uh, the users end up benefiting the entire community on getting great directions. If that's not enough for you, Trent, because you're like, well, I got, you know, I got my Google Maps or, you know, the, I, got, yeah. I got the iOS apps. Okay. There was a time, Trent, you could have had the Terminator giving you directions. Right now, you could have Stephen Colbert giving you the directions. You could have Neil like, like, like Harris. The, the play by play is all done by him. Yes, exactly. They oh, as a, oh, as a it's another thing they do as a cross promotional item. They go ahead and they funnel this out there through that. Isn't that a great idea? I like it. So it's a way to promote, but also it's a way for the community to help themselves. I get people thanking me for the items I report. Uh, they thank other people for the items. You know, it's a big back and forth reciprocity. Uh, but best of all, it's never gone wrong. The only thing I've ever experienced is when I'm thick headed enough to think I know better. And then I get there later than it originally said. <laughs> and, and you're like, piece of shit app doesn't divide. I, I, I can see in front of me which, which lane's going to be faster. Doesn't hey, know man, anything. It didn't grow up out here. It doesn't know these roads yeah, like dude. I do. It's not, yeah. it's not Cali born and bred, yo. No, it's not. But you know what it is, Trent? It's smart with the maths. So yeah. let's let it do its thing. Yes. Uh, folks, I'm telling you right now, if there's any one thing you're going to really enjoy, it's going to be an effortless drive that you'll get if you're running ways in your car. Uh, you're trying to get around. It's W-A-Z, the Z-E, W-A-Z-E, -E, Waze. You can find it there. It'll help you get around. It'll be a good time for all. Uh, and uh, yeah, go ahead, check it out. That's the app for the app of the week here on NetHeads. With clever meme, with funny tweet, I'll never leave my office seat. Those who think they know what's right, listen on Sundays to NetHeads. All right. He's got to throw some cold water on the situation. Start talking about nerd and stuff. You know, nerd culture is mainstream now. So when you use the word nerd derogatorily, it means you're the one that's out of the zeitgeist. System activate. This is NetHeads with Will Wilkins and Trent Hunsaker. It's a tech podcast. Tech podcast. But we are a sh ton cooler than your typical geek giving you the info you need to achieve mega nerd status mega nerd status netheads 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 you guys rock and now here's will and trent that's right everybody welcome to another edition of netheads my name is will and i'm trent that sounded a little sticky sorry everybody uh, anyway, if you want to take part in the program, you can. One of many ways. One of them, Twitter Trent. How do they do that? Well, NetHeads, uh, just he NetHeads. Use the hashtag NetHeads. Um, that fracking cat just said that he uses the app that, that we just cold opened with called Waze. Z-E. Uh -oh. And, dude, he's in SoCal. So, like, of all places, that's the yeah. place to use it. You can be like Caper Girl Mel. She uses the hashtag NetHeads. So does DJ Shameless, uh, our good friend, longtime listener, uh, Diane, Todd625, who was just hanging out with me on the Twitch channel, Roller Dog NC, Thor has got a whole host of others. Hashtag NetHeads. 
obviously whether, the place to be. Whether you're listening to now or on the podcast, it doesn't matter. By the way, Trent, I got to tell you, uh, one of the things that, that you just don't get used to around here is, uh, <laughs> oh my God, that's horrible too. Uh, Lee Velasquez, ZDigital13 on Twitter. Just uh, you're Because we're doing this and, and we do this video thing every once in a while, uh, people end up having netheads on their televisions. Yeah. And uh, the look on your face um, in that screen capture... I, all I can say is there is a man that truly <laughs> he loves his podcasting. Okay, so he doesn't much. let he just doesn't love it. He loves yeah. it. Like I love it. Like Adam loved Eve. Yeah, there you go. It is or that, Steve, that is some... or Steve. I'm not here to say who came first. It was, but I do know it was a guy because let's be <laughs> honest. Anyone that has like, dude, dude, we're weak. We're so weak. If you like, if the wind blows hard enough, it's like, yeah, give it. <laughs> and that's it. You know, so it's it will always be either Adam and Eve or Adam and Steve, but Adam is a selfish fucker, is what I know. Well, what about Eve and Eve? Or Adam and Eve and Eve? Or Eve well, and Adam I and mean, Adam? No, no, I, I know, but like in this scenario, a dude's gonna come first, regardless. Like, what like about- he like he'll even just think about Ad like like Eve and, and Eva, and he's like, Oh, skeet, skeet, skeet. He's done. Like what about what about Adam and Eve and Stella and Steve? Yeah, well, Adam Adam had that idea and it and blew it. It really is just starting to sound like a really inappropriate just Dr. Seuss story. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway. The, the, the sneeches with, with stars on their peaches. By the their way, I, I just have Nut. to say, uh, during the one episode of Rick and Morty where it was uh, Rick dating a hive mind. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was a when the hive mind lost control of the host planet's people. Uh, I, I I had a certain kind of like sneeches and snitches kind of feel when suddenly there was all of the people that were of the different nipple clans. Yes, uh huh, exactly. No. But but yeah, but yeah. but they just weren't like protesting. They were they they really really they, that was some race hate is what it was. Yeah, no, it was that that was some full on any Audi hatred, man. And if you want to take part in the program another way, uh, very simple, on Skype, NetHeads on Air. That's the easiest way. You can also give us a call, uh, 866-610-9455. Or last but not least, YakBet 9020. 9020. I love the YakBet. Because you know what? Always bet on Yak. I can't believe it's taken us this long to say that. Yeah. Always bet on Yak. As Wesley Snipes told us, always bet on Yak. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I'm almost positive he said that. I'm pretty sure. Uh, anyway, uh, and for those of you that are, are watching live and for some reason putting us up on your TVs, uh, no, there's nothing wrong with the electricity in my room. And I, I just have, have determined that as long as we're going to do the video thing, that's fine. But it, it's going to just be kind of a cinema verite experience. I'm not going to... Because uh, Trent, clearly, uh, with that screen cap, we know he doesn't pander to the camera. No. 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 Uh, if anything, if anything, it's just like, I hope the camera doesn't see what I do all the time. That is part of the reason why I still think we shouldn't do video. Um, oh, but that's, anyway. that's, that's, dude, that's the reason to do video. Okay, fair enough. Uh, you know what? I, you can't argue with where the internet's making money, right? Of course. Yeah, um, but anyway, Yak Pet ninety twenty. If you want to give us a phone call, so Trent, uh, I don't know if you know this. It's kind of we're kind of in a weird place. We just did a show on Sunday to make up for the show we didn't do on. No, wait a minute, strike that, reverse it. We did a show on Thursday because we didn't do a show on Sunday. Right. But Thursday was just two days ago. I really feel yes. like now that we've done the ago. app of the week, like yeah. maybe one Trent Tech story and get the hell out of here because we've already yeah. done this, right? Yeah. We, no, been there, was, done that. Bought, but that, bought the spice latte, but white that, girls. Oh my gosh! The it is it's back. The pumpkin spice is. latte is, is back. It's here. It's not going anywhere at least until New Year's. Get used to it. I don't know what the obsession with squash coffee is, but people love it. Yeah, I think I think it's just an excuse to get uh, fattening coffee and be like, eh, it's the season. I, I like the season, and it just makes me feel all warm. We're going to have 100-degree temperatures here for the next week. I'm not exactly feeling very fall-like. Uh, it is, if anyone can see, 40 or no, 58 degrees right now uh, outside here, and we're looking to get it, it freezing temperatures for the end of the week. 
Trent, I, I have a funny feeling, though. You're happy about it. Oh, sweet Jesus. I'm so happy about it. You can uh, always so, dress. You can always dress for warm. You can never dress for cold, or vice versa. You can always dress for cold. You can never dress for warm. Exactly. Or as I like to put it, once you're naked and still hot, you're screwed, and not the way you like. Yeah, but you're always hot, Will. Oh, Trent, you're, you silly. You're, you're naked. Stop. You're and you're hot, and you're close and you're hot. You're just hot. You're you hot. just you just stop. You're, you're just hot. a tease. Just quit it. So I, I, keep for, I keep forgetting we, we're doing video now. I shouldn't do things like that. No, anyway, you should. I know. I'm. I am officially at the point. Other than having these 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 silly superhero heads back here to help give me a little diversity and nerd cred, I'm ignoring the fact that we're doing video from now on. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'll I'll do. I'll take direction, but that even that's under protest. Dread. Yeah. So, so so you'll take direction like. Um, like if a director was like, okay, now you did really well, but I want you to do it again this time, but with more, more capriciousness. Can you do that? Like, oh yeah. Is that you no, mean? No, by, no by I, I got it, boss. No, I got it, boss. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm no. Okay. Yeah. No, let's just run it again. <laughs> and and of course the, the first take <laughs> was I'll do this under protest. So now here's the second take. You ready? Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll do this under protest. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh much better. Thank you. Thank you. I take I take direction like purportedly Bruce Willis does. Thank thank you, Mister Mister Willis. You're Appreciate very welcome. <laughs> you know, by the way, Trent, I got to tell you, I have been surrounded this weekend by like pure class. First of all, I, I don't know if I've ever shown this on uh, via photograph in any way, but uh, I have this that I picked up in Texas when Blair was born, uh, and that's an extra large insulated solo cup. Just so you know, I'm keeping it classy. And uh, to go hand in hand with that, uh, I apparently have a clear solo cup, stole style cup filled with uh, cheese balls today. Ooh, cheese balls. Well, I, you know, that's the exact thing that goes through my head every time I see these barrels of them that they have at the grocery store. Yeah. And, and are, earlier. Are they, are they Uts? No, these are, these are just uh, Safeway brand. Ooh, so be careful. There. I don't know. No, they, believe, Trent, Once trust you me. Go Uts, you never want to go Butts. Well, I'm just know what that means um i'm just telling you i i think when it comes to the technology of a little puffed piece of something covered in uh pseudo uh cheddar powder um i don't think they really uh have to go very far to achieve a certain level of quality there no you know not I mean? at all so i but i've got those rocking so i just wanted you to know that's the, the level of class you're dealing with on this end of the mic today yeah I hope you're okay with that uh, dude dude you're talking to someone who literally has been eating um, generic, generic uh, macaroni and cheese. It's been two years out of date for a month. You know what, though? If this were it's it, called, look, here's it's the thing: value time macaroni and cheese, and it went out of date in 2013. Trent, let me tell you something, though. Okay, anybody that hears that and judges you, I want them to imagine that same box of of mac and cheese, two years yeah. beyond the date, except it's the world of The Walking Dead, and nobody's yeah. delivering groceries anymore. Yeah. Right now, you're a smart mother trucker, and you you what you've been dining on has been good quality food. Oh, uh, what I've been dying on has been, you know, like, like, oh God, I, I, like, I want to go to a gourmet restaurant, but oh, I want some fucking mac and cheese. And you know what? You don't even need to have milk because if you use enough margarine in it, it kind of tastes like you had milk to put in it because that's what Trent always does, and it tastes great. It tastes fine. Yeah. So there. Pieces of shit. Wow. Okay. Um. <laughs> I, I don't even, I, you threw me for such a loop, I don't even know where I was going yeah, there. it's fine. But anyway, <laughs> the cheese balls, they came from the grocery store because my wife has, uh, she's had a migraine, right? And I don't know uh, how, I, I guess cravings come in line no, with dude, migraines. Nothing worse than a migraine. Nothing. Yeah. So my wife has been, I mean, I, we're really, I, I don't want to say lucky, but you know, it is kind of lucky that I'm in here right now. Uh, but my niece, uh, is staying the night so that's kind of like a support system there for for watching blair but anyway so i brought back the things that my wife requested from the grocery store and they were on the counter she did not ask for the cheese balls these are something only i look at and adore and love they remind me they taste like childhood trent yeah oh dude don't they though and like are you one of those dudes that like sometimes you put one in your mouth and you kind of just mash it into the top of your of your mouth with your tongue to the point where it just destroys the top of your mouth into like hamburger so that then when you eat another one it absorbs it even faster and you just taste all that 
cheesy goodness. It's it's not quite that graphic, <laughs> but I will put it in my mouth. And, and what I do is I I, I now I, I don't want to see that same face again that we saw on the screen cap a moment ago. I don't know what you're talking about. But I like to put it I like to put it on my tongue. And then what I do is I just I gently suck on it. Just gently, Trent. Yeah. Gently oh, suck on it. Yes. And it slowly just collapses oh, in on itself yeah. into a just a, a cheddary, mm. cheesy mm. paste. Oh God. Yeah. Tastes like childhood. Anyway, I brought that home. <laughs> and it's in a it's in a ridiculous uh big jar of cheese balls. Yeah. And the funniest thing was I was holding Blair and then uh, it, quite uncharacteristic for me. I set her down on the uh, the island in the middle of the kitchen and she ended up working her way right over there to the big ball of cheese balls or big uh, barrel. I don't know what to call yeah. it. Big no, barrel it is, of cheese balls. It's like, even like, like pressed in, in plastic to look like a barrel. Exactly. And she just hugged it and then had the biggest expression of happiness on her face. And I'm like, that's exactly how I feel about those. Yeah. That's oh. it right there on the head. It's the best. That's why Love that's why things. that's why kids are amazing, is because you get to experience the true joy you know you feel mm -hmm. and get it right there. Done. Um, what is oh, it looks like uh what's his name? Uh Fresh23 on Twitter, Doug uh posted the what's link. Up, Doug? Yeah, for those of you that don't know, if you're listening to us through Sir, you can watch us through video somehow, but um, old man Wilkins is in charge, so screw it if you can find it, whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> as I told Trent, screw it, they can hear it. Uh, if they can figure yeah. out how to watch us, good on them. Thanks, Fresh. Yeah, So, but thanks for putting that out there, man. We appreciate that. Uh, so anyway, Trent, one of the things we like to do on the program, uh, we already told them about an app, an amazing way to help them with their world. Uh, the yep. other thing we like to do is we like to to, to turn our attention uh, to some other stuff. So before we get into the Talk Force Friday, I think it's best that instead uh, we kind of get tech into... News. There you go. Trent, tech, tech it up! News. Party time. And tech see what? Tech news. Trent I don't know what to do when these things are on Tech now. Trent Tech. Tech and that's the problem with these coming from my side, Trent. Trent Tech. Tech I have to then at least select another audio channel or guaranteed I'm going to be up. You know what I mean? Oh, where it goes back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we like to we like to look, folks, this isn't the tech news you're going to get uh, going through Google. No, nope. you're not going to get it through the AP. No, this is. This is literally the Trent version of tech news. Mm -hmm. And you can it's only true. get it you can only get it one place folks. smodcast.com. Anyway, Trent, uh why don't you go ahead and, and share with us uh what you got in mind for us today? Dude, dude, two two stories that I want to get to for sure. Um holy shit. Japan, I love you. They have so Japan, I mean they're they make robots like like real robots all the time and shit and they've done one recently like you know those big like robotic arms that they always like use to make cars and shit that you always see um you know just like the industrial robot like which is basically yeah. just a hydraulic arm yeah the pr the primary oh, example of shit. like assembly line robotic automation yeah exactly exactly so uh the yakasawa electric corporation has developed, uh, they took one of their, their highest end um, industrial robots and they, they worked out a way to where it can mimic uh, a human's actions in front of it. And then they brought in a uh, Bushido uh, swordsman and they put a fucking sword in the, the industrial robot's arm. I'm going to tweet it out right now on the, uh, the, the NetHeads Twitter account. Holy shit, dude. It will blow your mind when you watch this. Like, we are so close to having straight up samurai robots walking around cutting people's heads off. Like, the video is insane. It, it shows all the shit that it cuts up. Oh, man. Do, do you realize what this means, Will? It means that, that the robots can finally rise up against their oppressors and take us down. They'll all, they'll all be Ronin because they don't fucking need to work for anybody. You know no. what I mean? Oh, my God. Ugh. Can you yeah. imagine that? It's like very, oh, very oh. cool though. But it, and that's what's so crazy, like that people can refer to that as a robot. Uh, because for me, a robot has, needs to have like two arms. It needs to look like Robbie the robot at, at the very least. You know what I mean? No, not in this case. 
Holy shit. It's so cool. If you're following along, using the hashtag NetHeads and tweeting it out from uh, NetHeads on air, one of the coolest videos you will watch all week, I swear to God. You're welcome for that. Next up, Will. Oh, wait. By the way, Trent, before I before I yeah. you go with that, just want to yeah. do a special shout out. Shit out? Yeah, why not? Shit Z out. out. Z's Digital 13 on Twitter. Uh, happy birthday, man. Thank you for always being there. Really yeah, appreciate dude. it. Happy birthday. As you were. One love, one love you and and yours. And dude, it's also uh, a week uh, since their his anniversary as well. Uh, I want to say, I want to say, seven or eight years with his wife. He and Crystal. Oh, well, <laughs> congrats, guys. Long time, um, right? Oh, cool. Now I can finally see the video while you talk. So, oh man, dude, I can't even tell you how stoked I am about this. Uh, there is a, a website. Um, it's it's. It's it's like an innovate. It's so there's a guy. He lives in Austria. His name's Francesco uh, Mac uh, Macari or something like that. Uh, he's a designer, and uh, the, the start of the week he kind of broke the internet with a new thing that he came out with. Again, I'm going to tweet this out. Um, he calls it the dildo maker. Okay, now and this, which you know, hold on, hold on. Seem Trent, there was a bit of net congestion. Did you just say the Bilbo maker? No, no, is this, there is no, there is no bag ends in this at all. <laughs> There's no unexpected journey here. Nope. No, well, there's actually, no, there is, there's only to there. There is no back again, right? You go to Mordor and then you fall in. Okay. Head first. Gotcha. It is called <laughs> the dildo maker, and uh, I'm tweeting out right now. This is what first got posted out um, on the internet. Uh, and people kind of went crazy thinking like, holy shit. So literally, I could now turn anything, I repeat, anything into a dildo. And how it works is it, it you know, it looks just like a classic um, pencil sharpener. You know, like when you go to school yeah. and you, you, you stick a phallic object in and then you crank it. Well, this is the, the internal device is makes it anything look like a... Uh, like a penis head, you know? Okay. <laughs> so, so you could, so he, so there's pictures there, you know, obviously the first one you're going to try is a carrot. Sure. That, I mean, that one's a no brainer. Then he puts up a sausage, a, a bratwurst, if you will. Done. Right. However, the Huffington Post, uh, as, as I too fell in love with this, uh, track this oh, dude. Track on, this, dude. The yeah. thing that you're missing about this is that it appears uh, the way, it, wait, hold on. Is this just an image processor or does it, is it literally like a giant pencil sharpener that puts the head of a penis on things? So, so that's, that's the, that's the idea, right? That you could, you could take a phallic symbol, stick it in, turn the crank, pull it out and you have a cock. Right? All right. All right. Well, yes, sir. And uh, the, the freaking, the Huffington Post, they may have in some of the, the best uh, verbiage I've ever read in a, uh, <laughs> in a uh spoiler alert they're saying you know be, be careful <laughs> before you run out to uh trader joe's and start picking up the <laughs> the most organic dildo you can find this guy is just a designer he's mm -hmm. like like a graphic designer he is not a tinkerer or an inventor or anything like that and so when they talk to him he's like oh no 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 I, you know, he, he said on my website, I probably should have put this in the art section more so than I should have put it, say, in the innovation section. Right. Because he, he <laughs> has no plans to develop this. However, he does now suspect that after putting it out there, it'll be probably like a year before someone does the exact same thing and sells the shit out of it. Oh, yeah, exactly. Some so, somebody's already pre 3D printed up like uh, 40 <laughs> different prototypes. Oh yeah, totally. They just they just got to figure out uh you know how how to make the the packaging so that there's no implication that you can put your own penis in there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because exactly. that's going to end poorly for everyone involved. <laughs> I've never liked this shape. I want a more ergon I want a more oh, natural look. Gosh, yeah. I, I I want it more, you know, whatever. Anyway, who I think it was looking really for funny. The term, I want it more symmetrical. Oh, symmetrical. You thank you. It's this this asymmetrical penis of mine is just really unbecoming. Ah. <laughs> ah. I love it, friend. Ah. Ah. Thank you so much for bringing that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got more tech, but if you're ready, to, if you want to talk about Force Friday, dude, maybe. I mean, 
I'm always ready to talk about the Star Wars. Well, here's the thing, uh, Trent. I, I think Saturday probably brought the the best thing I ever saw about Force Friday about. Um, that sounds weird, but first I was saying it was about <laughs> something. Then I was using the term as in about face. You know, it brought yeah, something yeah. that, anyway. Uh, what it was, it was a story that a guy published about how he had tweeted on Force Friday, how he had stayed up and gone to a store at midnight. And the funny thing is, this is the same Toys R Us that used to be the Toys R Us of my childhood. It's only 20 minutes away oh, no from shit. in Pleasant Hill. Yeah, it's that's still, cool, man. If I'm in that area, that's the Toys R Us I go to. Yeah, because um, it's, I mean, you know that one. Yeah, and, and essentially what he was saying was he went there and he was saying that retailers seem to have not really planned out force friday very well it didn't address the the needs of the community if you will you know all yeah. of the die hard star wars fans parents fanatics whoever you are mm -hmm. uh, all of you uh weren't served well because they didn't have enough of the new stuff uh, especially like the six and a quarter inch figures or the three and seven yeah. eighths or whatever the fuck yeah, they are dude, the six inch black figures went so fast yeah and and no, so, they're called they're called black like because the <laughs> it's not because of the character who is you know african-american that you know the guy that plays it the, the not, box, just, they're, not just yeah, they're called <laughs> they're called the black figures because they come in black packaging it's like a special like whoo never yeah, mind yeah just let it let it ride man let it ride wow. Cause you know what, dude? Everyone's gonna take it their own way. You could say the I black know. figures. Some of them are just gonna think all the fin figures. They're not gonna know it was the limited edition ones. You know, they're like, right on, brother. Not Obama won't take away my guns. Just let it ride, man. Yeah, it's about let heritage. It be, about heritage, not hate people. Let it let it be interpreted uh -huh. whatever way it is gonna be, man. Uh, but uh, with the figures, so apparently, uh -huh. it, I, you know, I I didn't do it. I didn't pursue anything. I didn't try and go out and get anything. My my wife and child uh, did buy me a set of barbecue tongs, though, where the handle Ooh. looks like Darth Vader's uh, lightsaber handle. And when you oh, click it cool. open, it naturally makes some lightsaber noises. So it's really nice. And it has a plastic sheath that is red, so it becomes a, a lightsaber. A lightsaber, in essence. sure. Uh, so I did have something uh, on Force Friday, and I thought it was great that my daughter caught wind of Force Friday, and she thought it was nice that Dad would have something. But, you know, there are other people that took this very seriously, including this guy, and he did, like, a tweet about it, and it became a full story, and it became a meme. And my favorite thing is that I think eight hours later, I saw a tweet from Melissa Staten, Staten? I don't know her name. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, I should say. Uh, but she on Twitter said, she retweeted it, but said, this is a story about a grown man complaining about not getting toys. <laughs> But it, <laughs> but it was like really heartfelt, though, right? Like, it, it, uh, yes, it really was. But, <laughs> but it boiled because at first I was like, well, man, that's a real bummer for these people. They were really looking forward to it. They were into it, you know. And I, I yeah. felt bad. And then, and then she said that and I'm like, well, yeah, you're right. You're right. As yeah, I mean, I didn't I, go get yeah, something. Yeah, I mean, at the at the end of the day, that's probably most stories are about like. Just adults complaining about what things they didn't get. Like, yeah, I guess if it was written, if everything was written through the perspective of like a twelve-year-old, would be like, "Oh, whiny piece of shit." Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's so so sad he couldn't share such an event with his kids. Jesus, get a room. Oh well, yeah. dude. I think part of what got people was when in the story he this guy dragged his fiance to the store as well. And mind you, they're in town for they were in town. I think for a reunion or a wedding or something for the holiday. Yeah. You know, they they weren't from this area. They were from L.A. And so it it there was one part in the story though where uh, seeing the line for the figures aisle, he sent his fiance to the Lego aisle, and she got one of the things he wanted for him and brought it back to him. And, yeah, and then yeah. at the point when he saw that there were no figures, he even looked at the, the land speeder thing in his hand and thought about putting back. And there were people in the comments that were like, you fucking piece of you, shit. You, you went to go get that ass. for you. The fuck were you doing? <laughs> yeah. You should marry that girl. How could you think about putting it back? Oh, shit. That's so funny. It's just amazing. The, the, uh, it, the internet truly is a gigantic double-edged sword. It is just oh, amazing. The things it that... Really that you never know which way the tide will go on things. Uh, for Force Friday, I think the, the better part, though, that I got out of it, the stuff that I thought was cool, was just some of the things that we have learned from the series, the new movie, just from the toys. 
Oh my gosh, exactly. Yeah, dude. Like, for example, we we found out that um uh what's his name isn't a Sith. Like the 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 dark the dark lord that everyone's like, whoa, that lightsaber wouldn't work. And then Stephen Colbert's like, oh yeah, yeah, it will, yeah. you bitches. Okay, now I'm gonna have to bust out uh, the fact that apparently my geek cred a little higher than yours right now, at least in this category. Granted, in some of the comic categories, I am gonna have a minus ten intellect. In That's this case, fine. I've got a little bit of a boost. Uh, yeah, I make up about, charisma. You're talking about Kylo Ren, and apparently, yeah. I believe he is. That's not his exact name. I think he is a Kylo of like the Ren group. Do you know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, so it's so it's so it it in and of itself is is a title like like a Sith or a exactly. A dark. However, not a Sith. Another thing we found out is apparently Finn. I believe at some point in the series is taking orders from the uh, the from Jake the dog. No, from the Chrome Dick from the Chrome covered <laughs> uh, stormtrooper looking. Uh, whose name I can't remember. So now, once again, I've lost cred. Yeah, and and that was one of the things on Force Friday that I think that actually looked really cool. Were were like costume sets for that's the the like the the gray stormtrooper. Well, the thing that we got revealed is like the mask says F N and some numbers. You know, fi uh, please commence firing or commence attack. And then the one of the toys is Finn saying the same thing, F N, and then the numbers. I don't know what to do, you know, and he's stressed oh. out. So it's like two totally non-related toys having two different parts of dialogue as well. Right, right, right. Yeah. But we all know, I mean, the the, the big thing from the story is that the quote unquote force awakens, which I guess is the uh jj abrams uh, written script version of the finale of buffy the vampire slayer where they found the ultimate scepter and through it willow casted a spell and activated all potential slayers so they all became vampire slayers in that one moment you know what i mean right Yep. Uh -huh. all having equal power and i think that's the same thing behind the force awakens the force is uh you know, it's been this like passive force, this this thing that connects us between us and whatever all they say. Well, and, and has just been understood, uh, misunderstood for for a generation. You know what, what I, mean? I what I think is really going to happen is the force is back and it's pissed. This yeah. is actually going to be like the uh, the Dolomite version of the Star Wars movies, and we're all duped. That's what I think. I'm probably well, very wrong. There is there's a there's a three part uh, episode of uh three part like three episodes of one story in the clone wars about a father who is the force like he is the force as a human and he has two children the the light and the dark side of the force and they're always at war with each other and i if they have if they like can work that in somehow if if anyone has ever watched the clone wars like though that's by far the best three episodes of all the clone wars and the most controversial a lot of people fucking hated it I liked it. Wow. But but so they had it, it wasn't that there was a real person. This was just like a personification or Yeah, yeah. So like the force mm -hmm. it just like is a thing. And then it has the light and the dark side manifest through its children. And mm -hmm. they're always at odds with each other. It's really, really good. I, I wish I knew uh what the episode numbers were right now, but it is man, if they can work like because it's like some theological shit, man, that they deal with in it. It's really good. It's kind of like in in Lost. You didn't experience this, but in like the last season or the next to last season. Um, by the way, now Z Digital Thirteen, who we wish a happy birthday to, is is doodling on our on images of us. Yeah. Like my microphone is now an angry microphone looking carrot Koopa. head. It is. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh uh -huh. no! Here we go again. Yeah. Eventually, mm -hmm. we're going to learn. Actually, all of Netheads is nothing but a cover for Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. No, that's all it is. Not the case. Uh, anyway, <laughs> in Lost, <laughs> in like the fifth or sixth season, like out of nowhere, suddenly we see that uh, Jacob is uh, this character, Jake. You know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to describe it. It's going to sound too stupid. <laughs> no, I like it. I like where this but is going. But needless to like say, it, after season after season after season of Great Mystery, suddenly we learn that there is just a gigantic struggle between darkness and light that is continuously yep. going on. This fucking Regardless island they're on. Exactly. 
and then the island and then they're on was somehow like this focal point for it. Yep. You know? Yep. Ex exactly. Just, just like in, and, and in the, that episode, that story, um, there's a, a part that's not able to be seen on instruments or anything, um, a part of the universe, but that's where the force is the strongest. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's why all this stuff is manifest there anyway. Oh, yeah, interesting. No, it, it makes total sense to me. Like, in that that's sense, but. A, that's the kind of stuff I like. I like, you know, it's not I as too, heady. Man. It's not as heady as that original series episode of Star Trek where you had the people where like uh, they they're half black, half white, but the two guys are inverted, and, <laughs> right? And they, and they end up going into some zone where they're continuously battling through eternity or some depressing shit. It's not as heady <laughs> as that, but it's kind of like oh. telling the same story. Uh, they free. Uh, I saw. Um, they have like a, a reproduction. Kenner's doing some reproduction toys, like the cloth figured toys. So they look like uh, Migos of that black and white figure. Oh, it's still as creepy now as it was back then, man. Yeah, that's just a disturbing look for people. Yeah, because I think were was it just halved or were they even quartered? I don't know. I th oh, it, it was one of those. I just remember the face. I just remember the face because then Roddy Roddy Piper also did something like that once in a, a pay per view event. I want to say it was a, a WrestleMania, and it made zero sense to me. Yeah, we we, we saw no connection. Yeah. We just don't know. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it, it's it's perfectly fine. So anyway, that's where I was going with that. Uh, but uh, for Force Friday, uh, at least we we did get to learn some stuff. I uh, clearly it was. Uh, Maybe it was put together and planned by the same people that thought Prime Day was going to be a great idea. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. And 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 I don't know because I haven't. All I saw were were posts from friends and family that like were stoked to get stuff. I had a a cousin of mine. Oh man, he picked up a like. I don't know how big it is, but it looked fucking huge. Diecast like metal diecast uh model of the Millennium Falcon. Holy shit! It looked so bad, like and like heavy, and just a. Mm, I was really fucking jealous. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> no, that's oh. fine, dude. It, it, the moment I found out some of the cool toys, like the um, what's the equivalent of a of a drone, a quadcopter drone, but built into a framework of the Millennium Falcon. What? Are you serious? Oh, you haven't heard that one? No. Oh yeah, a and and they've done similar things. I don't know how they they did them with uh with x wings as well so seriously I, I i could not i'm glad i did not bother trying i would have spent a lot of money just so i could have a friend over and we could continuously make death star passes over my pool yeah and you're like you're like what the fuck it's an exhaust port you can't shoot something down an exhaust port that's that's supposed to be for sucking things out not for or for blowing things out not for sucking things in now I never took it that way, Trent. But now you're <laughs> you've given me a whole new light and to look at the end of a, a new hope. Oh, it changes it's, everything, man! It's a gigantic homosexual metaphor. Oh wait, now see, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just thinking like, you know, it, it would be hard to like shoot something in the exhaust of a car, let alone a fucking space station. You know the the heat that that thing's got to be pushing out. Those, okay, those Trent, bombs would have exploded way before they even got to the center of the. Oh, maybe it's an, maybe it's an inside job, man. Maybe they misrepresented. Maybe it was actually the intake of an exhaust port. Because ah, as you know, okay. uh, in order to have uh, pressure going out, you are going to need something to take uh, additional air in to offset that. Yeah, no, that's true. That makes, that makes Because yeah. you put it in that light, and suldenly that 45-degree that angle turn that the fucking thing makes when he shoots it, is, which apparently is a miracle, uh, <laughs> makes more sense because it was kind of drawn in, right? That well, makes more and, sense. Yeah, no, and, and I and I also think that there that it also could have been part of the 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 force was helped guiding it as well. Mm hmm. De well, um, definitely, I think that or more to not the just point, no, yeah, and not and guided it totally, and not and not just like the shot was only someone with the force could have made that shot. No, I think the force was actually guiding the bombs themselves because, like, literally, it goes up and then it like just goes straight down. It makes like. In sight, like in space, I don't think anything could do that, like move like that. No, it it couldn't. It shouldn't. Oh, well, and, it, and, you know, and that's the thing. You're in space either in space. And that's no. Well, no, that was aliens, but I'll still give it to you. <laughs> oh, you just mean theoretic, just in practical. Well, let me ask you this, Trent. Uh, the, the Death Star was uh, was too big to be a moon, or too big to be a satellite. Sure. Yep. I don't know if they said it was too big to be a moon. That's no I don't, moon. There you go. Um. And so at that point, is it generating some of its own gravity? 
Oh, it would have to be. There you go. See, so maybe I mean, now. I mean, everything everything is is generating gravity to some extent. This is quite literally the most pointless conversation <laughs> we've ever had on the show. I don't know what you're talking about. Like we know we know for a fact that people have made careers out of talking about the the, the intricate politics of building a Death Star. Or, or more to the point, too, there is an alternative cut, my friend, that's acted out with vegetables where they argue the fact that, that Star Wars is nothing but a gigantic theological war, that it's a religious war, oh, if you shit. think about it. Because even though you have the rebels, they don't win until you get the involvement of a faction religion, which is the Jedi. Oh, In true. the meantime, yeah. the Emperor, who is a Sith, who follows a specific doctrine and religion so is his is his uh, kingdom is his uh, reign is it actually a theocracy i would think it would be no it totally would be all uh, and, and just like any other theocracy no one ends up like everyone ends up not believing in it and again this is something kevin smith thought of 20 years ago so i'm, right. I'm not and, and, i'm not laying claim to it i'm like holy shit will you just broke my brain man well somebody else broke mine a long time ago my friend <laughs> Back when I was a young and obsessive man that might do something nowadays, like purchase a, like a pair of jean jorts and a and a and a and a Oilers Edmonton Oilers jersey, but I wouldn't do that now. No, because you're you're your own person. You're not <laughs> you're not a creepster. <laughs> Well, Trent, I was watching the Bad News Bears at like 1 o'clock in the morning last night, so it's not like we can claim that I am my own made man. <laughs> no, well, let me let me rephrase that. You have your own identity. By the way, can I just tell you a little something? Because as yeah. everybody knows, the only reason why we are, are present on Smodcast.com is because uh, through one uh, turn and another, I've been lucky enough to be the guy that does a lot of audio processing and other things behind the scenes. Thankful for it every fucking day of my life, I got to tell you. Um, and, and, and me too. <laughs> and sometimes there are little things that happen. Like, for example, tonight in Seattle at Bumbershoot, there is a live Wait, episode of Talk called? Salad Bumbershoot. <laughs> an event up there. That's really what it's called? Dude, can we stay focused, all right? Sorry, stay with just, me. I, that's the greatest name ever. Well, come on, man. What about like when you hear about um, Bumbershoot? Bumbers, I don't even know what it is. I'm assuming it's a comedy festival, but who knows? Bumbles bounce. Yeah. That's all I think of. Bumbles bounce. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we, we they they went to Seattle and took all the teeth out of the monster's mouth, and now he's friendly. No, that's yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's he's he just had a toothache the whole time. Um, no, uh, uh, look, it doesn't matter. They're in Seattle doing a live episode of Talk Salad and Scrambled Eggs now. Uh, Perfect place to do it. Now, uh, when people buy tickets for this event, here's the loophole. They're actually going to be able to show the episodes they're not really talking about or, oh, or, right. providing, or not really providing a commentary on. You know, take your pick. Um, and they've got uh, backup. Uh, Matt has a DVD, and I have also gotten digitally the episodes as well as the subtitles. Now, for Oh, the, nice. For the, but these are just as a backup for him to have. Little inside dope, though. If they end up using those digital versions I submitted, well, let me just say that commentary <laughs> tracks are editable. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No, or makes, subtitle that's... tracks. Subtitle yeah. tracks are editable. So at the very beginning of each one, I put in. So we'll know, or we oh, won't no. know, which version they use. Because it's just like on the first one, for the very first moments, it just says, like, welcome to Talk Salad and Scrambled Eggs. And then right. in the next one, it says, oh, look at the pretty red light on the top of the space needle. And that's it. And then it moves on. It's nothing oh, but shit. like, it's not off book from that point on. Uh -huh. Beginning of the second episode starts oh, off. No. It says, welcome <laughs> to the second episode. Did they talk about the Terminator throughout the last one? <laughs> oh, shit. The hernia. <laughs> if I don't have a job tomorrow, you now know why, Trent. <laughs> Hey, uh, Will, we need to talk. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me to do it. It was probably because I just oh, knew that this shit. was the lowest likelihood of the copy that would be used. <laughs> and I figured it would be one funny thing that would throw oh, them off. God, dude, that's fucking hilarious. I, mind you, I may have lost my job doing this. But, dude, but here's, here's the thing. If What a way to like, go. Yeah. What, a, what a way to go. And B, I, I can only imagine that... <laughs> 
how awesome that would be if it did happen that he noticed. It wouldn't even be a, a like like an anger thing. It'd just be like fucking Wilkins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I hope. I I look God sometimes, damn Wilkins. I, sometimes I don't make the right decisions, Trent. Okay. <laughs> This may be one of them. Only time will tell. I mean, odds are they will use the DVD version. That makes much more sense. Right, and it, right. It, well, it that's, and, and that's what most everyone else would be using as well. Yeah, well, the, the times they've been watching them, I think they've been streaming them off of Netflix. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which Hey, speaking of... Uh, speaking of the year that it's been on Netflix. Yeah, uh, but what did you say? The, uh, it's been a year now that, that it's been on Netflix. Yeah, obviously, because I think it was almost, it was just a couple months later this time last year where you were talking about how you were I just it, yeah. knee, you yeah. were knee deep into and finishing a marathon of watching Frasier. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I, and I know I've asked you on the show before, but I'm going to ask you again. How does it feel to be like cutting edge and ahead of the curve of Matt Meyer and Kevin Smith on that one? <laughs> No, no, because and I I can't even say that because I started watching it uh is like especially hardcore after Kevin was on or after um Arlene Sorkin was on Fat Man on Batman whose husband was the uh the showrunner. Mhm. Mm and he, okay. and Kevin just kept on talking about how much he loved that show and how he'll put it on and fall asleep to it every night because it feels like family. <laughs> Steve Kent, by the way, Stephen D. Kent on Twitter says, if you don't have a job tomorrow, it's because it's Labor Day, you dirty scab. <laughs> D hashtag dad joke. Yeah, that would have been a good one. But no, it just says hashtag dad uh, But okay, so you're you're in the same boat then. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, no, but seriously, that's that's why, yeah. I mean, sure, it's it's, it's a couple years different, but yeah. But still, when you, it, it still was on the air when you were growing up, right? Oh, it, dude, that was appointment television in our home. Right, My, especially yeah, oh yeah, yep. given the antenna situation. Yep, oh, we got three channels. Right, and so then Frasier must have been some serious dopeness. Yeah, and then in the winter, we would sometimes get PBS. And right, only every once in a while, though. Yeah, which, like, which as a, as, like as a kid, dude, oh, I was so stoked when winter would come because I'd get to watch uh, Sesame Street. Oh, oh, I wasn't even thinking of that. I'm all like, oh, wow, so did you get to see Red Dwarf? Did you see any Doctor <laughs> Who? No, dipshit, he was oh, a little kid. Yeah, I was it's just Cookie Monster, you know. <laughs> and by the way, Will, you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah, the, I was I was really hooked on the Red Green show at an early age. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I don't know what I think sometimes. I just forget who I am. Please, baby, don't be mad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kevin Nealon. I take it back, Kevin Nealon. <laughs> I just get so afraid, Kevin Nealon. See, when you do that to me, that as in the parlance Kevin's been using lately, that is just deep cut net heads right there. Oh, dude, it's so good. I mean, seriously, I don't, I don't mean to to talk about us too much, but I, if yeah, you think yeah. about it, we are we are on the uh, the precipice of having done two hundred episodes of this show. I what have you done? In your actually, I don't want you to answer what you've done yeah, at no, least two hundred times in your it's, life. It's gonna be a real sad answer, Will. <laughs> I was a teenager too, and you know that was more than two hundred times. I'm sure by age fourteen. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, um, yo, but at least I mean, there's there's only there's three hundred sixty five days in a year. By the way, Trent, one of the other things we learned from Force Friday, and I was kind of I, I was kind of shocked about this. Um, I guess not really given uh, that because, you know, one of the things they say is that Kylo Kylo Ren apparently is just like uh, the ultimate, um, Darth Vader fanboy, I guess you would say, right? Oh, so he's a copycat kind of. Yeah. Well, you yeah, know, it's look, okay. Darth Vader is his Kevin Smith, right? Oh, and so, yep. so Kylo Ren has got like yep. Houston oiler inspired outfit yep. and he's got the, no, dude, it makes total sense, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he, wearing he, bands, yeah. but now he's already gone out and bought New Balance just because M Kevin mentioned he likes his New Balance sneakers that he got recently. And before that, he was wearing Clerks at knees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so that's what Kylo Ren is. But one of the things that uh, his character mask or the toy says is that um, something about uh, your – one of them is you're just a scavenger, and the other one is – uh, how and I'm paraphrasing, but basically how his goal is to to kill the last Jedi or the the lone Jedi or something oh, something along really? the lines saying that there's still just one fucking Jedi out there and it's still Luke Skywalker. 
That piece of shit. That, well, you know, they got to restore balance. Maybe the force is awakening because they got to restore balance. I don't well, know. And I, and I was just going to say, do, do you think, I mean, this is all just conjecture and it won't be relevant, you know, here in like two, three months. But do you think he knows the familial tie then between the Skywalkers? I wouldn't doubt it. You know, oh, another thing too. Did you because see the I don't trailer? know if everyone knows that Anakin turned into Darth Vader. Well, I mean, if you get that far in the story, don't you have I don't a clue know. that point? No, Ooh, but I mean, just, just, just like, no, not, 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 not us, but like people within the universe. Dude, as long as we're going to hopelessly nerd out, I love it. I say we just, I'm, I'm going, I'm like Immortan Joe. I am pushing the water valves wide open to the people below if we're going to do yeah. that. Yeah. By the way, have you seen Fury Road yet? No. Okay. Uh, dude, it's, it's available on digital, it's coming out on home video. I got to tell you, it is the most. In, I'm still holding out my arms with the valve. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, what's happening? Is those, gonna I mean, me? Am I well, going to get it in the face? That's the nice thing about the whole, you know, experience is that uh, you see that in the studio we really do mimic the things that we say <laughs> we mimic. It's uh, like, just give me the cock already. <sighs> well, actually, uh, Fury Road. Kevin has had an interested way of describing it, which is getting an amazing blowjob, and then when you finish it, the person doesn't stop right <laughs> oh yeah oh shit oh, that's hurting us. Oh, you all right hurting us. yeah that's it's that's funny what did what did we do to you trent what happened i have to push the hernia back in when i start laughing oh god i'm sorry man i didn't know he had no a it's okay too. daddy's not mad jesus get the duct tape you you prick Oh, uh, by the way, uh, Doug is pointing out we're just screaming on a different YouTube channel. I don't, I don't want to hear about any tech stuff when we're on the air. Not a bit. I don't care. Yeah, Seriously, honest to God. Before, okay, look, we only got a couple more minutes. Before we we let the valves go open and we go full nerd. Okay, uh, right. what is it? You never go, you never go full nerd, but we're gonna go full nerd. Okay, yeah, we're, going, we're going, we're going there, Jerry. We're going. We're, we're doing it. We're doing it, Jerry. We're out there and we're loving it. Um, before we go into that. Don't get me started on how frustrating and stupid some of the ways the interconnectedness of Google can be its undoing. You would think it would be very simple that I could, on the NetHeads on air YouTube channel, easily start a new Google Hangout that would funnel through that. Uh, let me just say that for me personally, the experience has been frustrating. So I don't want to hear about it. That's why I, I partially refuse to look at the camera. And I'm just treating the, the video as a cinema verite thing. I don't care. I'll pull it down later and we'll move it where it goes. Don't give two shits right now. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think we've already decided this is a problem for Trent to figure out. Clearly, I'm, I'm outdated and outmoded. Uh, I'm waiting for the, the junkers to come through and pick me up and send Hi. me to the underground lab where I'm cut down and turned into metal. Um, by the way, that's a robots reference, but you don't have kids. so Yeah. You know. Uh, oh, but, but anyway, I, but I've seen the show once, I think, or was that someone's house when kids were watching it? Yeah, and and I'll I'll just say it's 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 frustrating as 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 anyone would imagine when you would think something so simple could be done and it's not. So well, whatever. and and the best part about this is, Will, when we get done, you're gonna check your email, and then all things will be solved. Oh yeah, you think? You think? I hope so, Trent. I don't yeah. think so. I'm telling so. you. I want to have, I'm going to have faith. Trent, I only can have faith in four things in this world. The almighty Lord, my wife, my children, and you. Yeah, That's well, it. Then I think you won't be disappointed on this one. I hope so. Because, yeah. God damn it, old man. Get your shit together. Anyway, yeah. uh, if you want to hopelessly nerd out, the, the first of all, the question I got to ask you, is it too on the nose? Is Finn actually a Calrissian? Is that two on the nose? Can do you actually go out there and somehow make the only two black people we've ever seen in the series yeah. be related? Well, it's either going to be a Calrissian or a Hood. Okay, who are the Hood? Uh, Wilro Hood. He's in uh, Empire Strikes Back. Um, he's in like an orange jumpsuit he, as the Cloud City is like uh, being <laughs> like blown up. Mm -hmm. he, co he he comes running around a corner holding an ice cream maker. <laughs> He's hold he's, on, he's, dude, dude, dude. I'm not, I'm not making this shit up. Okay, you're okay. I want you to to understand something. Okay, just I want you to understand as an abstract what you just told me because I could personally take that as a description of like video footage that's being shown as shit's going down of people looting. That's what it sounds like you just <laughs> described to me. Yeah, dude. 
that that and see that that seriously is a whole spin on Will Real Hood that I never even thought of. <laughs> Maybe he was, he was. Maybe he was like, "Oh, this place is fucked. I'm 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 getting my fa I'm get I've had my eye in the commissary on that fucking ice cream maker <laughs> for seventeen parsecs now." Exactly. He's like, "Some well uh, now hold on, Trent. Parsecs are distance. They are not a unit of time." Yeah, I know. Whatever. And the whole thing about the uh, the achievements of the Millennium Falcon is that it was its nav computer was able to make that particular run in less parsecs than normal. Oh, God! I know it's just sad that I say that, right? Anyway, yeah. Well, I, I mean, it is the Kessel run. Now, here is the other thing too, Trent, uh, with Finn. Uh, the uh, I, once Instagram decided to break outside of the box, okay, they decided to allow rectangles, and the first thing they did was they ran a 20-second, like, additional footage trailer from Force Awakens. And at the very end, we saw part of what we saw before, which was Kylo Ren coming out and lighting up that saber. Then the next shot we see is a wide that pulls in a little bit on Finn, lighting up and holding blue lightsaber. Oh. Blue lightsaber trend, and and what yeah. people are saying is that's the same one that Luke lost on Bespin. Oh shit! Then it would have. Well, maybe. If so, if it really is that one, first it of all, better that, not be. If it is, how did he get it? To everybody is uh, thinking the same thing I am. What happened to the fucking hand? That's just me. <laughs> I would like to. Th I'd. I would like to think it, it. They'll have an homage to like Sam Raimi, mm -hmm. and. And it like uh, became a character in and of itself. It's just later on. That's one of the last things we're going to see from the, one of the last uh -huh. shots of legacy character Luke is uh, he's just like, ah, oh, finally I get to relax. And then that annoying hand just creeps up on his shoulder. <laughs> yeah. He just starts running towards him and you hear the evil dead music. Yeah, exactly. That's a good mashup. I like that. Uh, but if it's the case, but that really does answer, ask a lot of questions, but we don't know how he gets it either. Cause I've always had a theory that, you know, at some point, Luke would go back and at least try and look, use the Force. To, I mean, if anybody could find a random object lost, somebody that could tap into the Force as long as it's willing, it, th like, a Jedi never loses his keys, right? I wouldn't think so. Right, exactly. Always tell him like that. Exactly. So, in that case, uh, if there's anybody that would go back, it would be a Jedi that could find his lost lights. Because, really, you got to think about it. Uh, that's like... Uh, even the bad guys in the movies, when they show that they throw away a gun, once the heat's off, they go back and get it because they don't want some kid shooting themselves with it, right? Yeah. Or, or, or they just break it in half. No, that's Superman. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Or do you mean the wooden-handled handled ones? Like they'll, yeah, they'll snap a, a shotgun? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. See, I wasn't there with you. I'm sorry, yeah. man. No, it's fine. I'll try better keep up. You know, I'm just, just a dumb, dumb old man. We anyway. Keep on turning. They do, hopefully. Well, that's what the ginkgo biloba is supposed to help with. Yeah. And other random sampling herbs, man. You know? Yeah, Keep dude. you young. Yeah. Um, but I think those are the only things that I've gotten out of the, uh, out of the toys and out of the stuff we've seen so far. Uh, I think it's... Uh, the thing that I'm looking forward to the most is the way that they do bring the legacy characters back in, if you will. I hope it is kind of a... Uh, I don't know. I bet you it's going to have kind of a Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of feel to it too. Yeah, I do too. Especially where we saw that that um you know that teaser of Chewie, we're home. We're like, home. I really hope that's the first time we see them in the movie. Is is that that scene in particular? Because I would fucking just lose my shit at that point. Actually, you know what though? I think if you think about it cinematically. By the way, I got to tell you something. Being the fan of a guy that does movies for a living in many ways can ruin watching movies for you. Oh, yeah. Because I picked up on one thing that Kevin said recently in one of the pods, and it was just that, you know, you never put a loaded gun on screen without it going off sometime. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I did finally get to see, like, Ant-Man. And I'll just say that there was something. It was shown on screen a total of three times. I probably already said this. Uh, but we'll be unspoilery here. And sure enough, the first time I saw it, I'm like, okay, why are we being shown this explicit shot that we're being seen, shown? Right. The, you know, why are we seeing this? Later on, see a close-up shot of the exact same object again. 
So oh, yeah. I'm like, yep. okay, this is, I'm supposed to see this for a reason. And when you see the object, it's like, okay, well, I know what it is. It's, it's not what it appears, which is a lot of the theme of the movie as well. So yeah. it worked out. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, it, so now I, I look at movies and things like that. You never actually um, show anyone or show anything unless it, it's meaningful. So now I, I unfortunately look at things even a little more too analytical than I, I would like to. And so that's why I'm trying not to get too much into this. But considering we've seen this scene, that means we've already seen that moment. That's not going to be their reveal trend. What we're waiting for now, because we've seen the loaded gun, okay? Oh, we, yeah, yeah, true, the real true, power, yeah. The real power is in them finding the gun. Ah, so it's okay. we're gonna get all emotional because okay. it's not gonna be the first time we see Han and Chewie, but we're gonna see them hopefully because this is where the real I mean this is where grown men will be crying. Yeah, they they're not looking for the Falcon, but they stumble upon her. Okay, see, and I thought it was gonna be the grown men would start crying when Jar Jar makes his appearance, and we're all like, fuck. That's not going to be crying, my friend. That's when is that's when people will just cry out. We're going to burn this mother down. <laughs> I had one friend that had. A, he's like, yeah, I was really. I was, I was thinking about going to Force Friday, but I didn't want to end up with the fucking Jar Jar figure at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fitting. It's true, though. I mean, but that's one of the things about all of this, about the new movies and the new plan, is that it's in. I hate to say, it, but it's in better hands. It's in the hands yeah. of people. That, that know what they're doing in building franchises now. Totally. Uh, speaking yep. of which, by the way, uh, one of the things I picked up off of, oh, it's so sad that all of my news comes from my work, uh, but I wasn't aware of this, but Kevin Feige from uh -huh. Marvel, who yeah. was kind of like the creative overlooker of the MCU, yep. apparently within the company, you know, nowhere else in the world would somebody say this, but within the company, Avengers was is kind of deemed as a disappointment. Did you know that, Trent? Yeah, I've I've heard that. So what they did is they took good old Kevin there, the man behind the or who's kind of steering the MCU, and they they got away from the think tank and they they took him out from under who he was being supervised before, and now he like reports to the head of Disney or something. Which so I think that that's just fine. Yeah, well, now it means because you know there are certain limitations financially that may have held things back with Avengers or something. So yeah. now it's just going to be like uh, he's reporting to a person where he's like, I don't know if it's Iger or somebody else, but it's it's this kind of person that's just like, oh, we got a problem, throw money at it. Exactly. Mm hmm. Just where you go, boom. So uh, that's good news. Now the thing that bummed me out, however, was that uh, it turns out the. The people that oversee the TV division are staying where he was. So, you know, oh, I, okay. we're not going to see more. Even after the success, I'm not sure we're going to see a lot of money thrown at, like, the, the Netflix TV shows and the like. They're not going to throw money to fix those things. But, and, fuck, they're not broken. They're so good. I got to tell you, Trent, I'm very excited for you to finally see Ant-Man because it is just Me a fun too. movie. It is, yeah. it is so much fun, man. And, and, and it's exactly what we need. Oh, by the way, that's what it, it reminded me of what I forgot about. My, my summation of Fury Road is just kind of like it, it, every time this movie, movie stops to pause, it's for good reason. Because it, it's, it, it's so your asshole can get, a, get like a break because it's so tuckered up, like right around your neck, it's so tight. I, Trent, this was one of the most intense movies I have watched in a long time. Yeah. Like so much so that I was just sitting there wrapped with attention. And and I, I literally, at one point, I had my, my hand. This is a sign that I'm engrossed and caught up in things because I was, I was holding my collar right beneath my chin, kind of yeah. like trying to, I don't know what this is protecting me from or, or what it's doing, but it's kind of like I just get bunched up because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so intense. And I kind of get all, ooh, and that's what it's like. I mean, it's, seriously. It's, it's your version of sitting on the edge of your seat. It really is. that one, And the amazing thing, too, is that they made this movie. This is a movie nobody asked for, but it's a movie they knew we would want and watch. And it is just so good. Uh, it just... I never would have expected that they could come out with a new Mad Max movie that would actually, and it's not really Max's story at all. He's right, just yeah. kind of in there. 
the other thing I appreciated with it uh, is the the guy that plays Max in this one who played Bane, whose name I'm not remembering because I'm on mic. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. He he actually plays the character very. The, Max doesn't have a lot of lines, but he's playing him. he's playing a character that's kind of gone nuts. And yeah. there's and there, there is one point in the movie where he points out the most obvious best plan, which is also the craziest. But he doesn't deliver it in an over-the-top way to deliver it. He just says, this is this is where your best success is. And yeah. they're like, there? And he's like, mm-hmm. Yep. That's it, right? Yep. And, and then they're like, he well, we could John, He goes all John Wayne. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take all this time to go this way and go around and do that way. Um, and he's like, nope. Go back the way we came. Right there. <laughs> right there. And, and again, so, they like sum it up, and he's like, mm-hmm. And yep. he's just very contained because he knows they're what like, he's they're saying. Like, they're like, wait the fuck, hold up. We just came all this way, and now we're going to turn around and backtrack? And he's going, yeah. yep. Josh Stiffer on Twitter, by the way, says, totally agree. I made the mistake of clicking on it, so now it's not coming through. Sorry. Uh, totally agree on Mad Max is what he said, and the soundtrack was really good, too. It was, And they, they did a clever way of working that in because this Emoten Joe, the, the main bad guy, he has, you know, the trailer of uh, it's it's amps and speakers, and he's got uh, a mutant double guitarist on the front, and he's got guys thumping on big drums in the back. So he's constantly got his battle jam rolling. Oh yeah, so so he, he announcing that he's coming. Exactly, you know, much yeah. in the traditional way of war. Yeah, uh, like like when I'm like ah ah, and then she's like, I better move. Yeah, I uh, totally agree about Mad Max. The music is amazing, too. Builds wonderfully through the whole flick. Yes, I think that's the reason why I got so engrossed. And Matthew Corey says Fury Road was great because it was a good story, and it had real vehicles and stunts and not a, a bunch of CGI. Although I could tell you I could see that there was, there was CGI enhancement, but they did do a lot of practical effects. Like, you can tell... There are really guys that are on giant sticks that are pendulum swinging from one side of a vehicle to the other side of a vehicle yeah. in trying to attack and deliver things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, I, I, of all the movies, Trent, I, I tell you that, that you definitely have to see. Fury Road is one of them. Yeah, it's, it's definitely on my to-do list. As a matter of fact, I think what would be best for you, living room, late at night, lights off, watching that bad boy. Yeah. Just so you're fully engrossed in it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure, dude. Uh, anyway, we, we we tapped a lot of things I didn't expect to, but I really enjoyed it. Did you, Trent? Dude, it's all, it's, I, I, I mentally came at least thrice. Well, in, in that case, three times is all I'm, I'm looking for. Now it's finally time to meet for me to have my pathetic 15 seconds, right? <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to spend it by myself the way I always do. So anyway, folks, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Another edition of NetHeads right here. Uh, my name is Will. I'm Trent. You've been listening to us on none other than, uh, well, actually, many different places. But you can always find us at one website. And Trent, what is it? Uh, it's smartcast.com. Truth. This is NetHeads with Will Wilkins and Trent Hunsaker signing off. I know, right? But stop being a little Nancy and deal with it. NetHeads. 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 We'll be back soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Seriously, that goes by so fast now. Yeah, it does. Yeah, no, not yeah. the outro, the show. I'm I'm amazed. <laughs> the outro's still long. <laughs> Lord Almighty, <laughs> it just keeps going and going, my friend. Um, you feel you? You know what? You you forgot to plug Death Ray though. I didn't. I had rolled right oh, over. Oh, you know what? That's cool. That's fine. It's all good. But you know. But no, it's important because we need people to know they need to go to deathraycomics.com and, and click the yeah. shop link. The more, the more people that go to Death Ray, the more chances I have of seeing movies like Ant-Man. Exactly. You can see movies have more than two-year-old... Uh, Macaroni the way, and cheese that, 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 that the, the welfare cases in the basement left because they yeah. even they wouldn't eat it. Even they wouldn't touch it. Now, okay, wait, hold on a second. Before you were selling it as two-year-old macaroni and cheese past the date... Now you're telling me it's not only that, but it was also welfare leavens. Oh yeah, totally. No, it totally okay. was. Yeah, yeah. So does that mean every every bite comes with a slight satisfaction or a slight taste of uh, both satisfaction and despair? Yeah, 
Yeah, mostly I just I just try not to even think about it anymore. I just I just push it in and hope I, I make it through the night. Let me just see my mac and cheese and cry. Well, leave yeah. me alone. Let me just me grind alone. it up, grind it up so it doesn't get blocked in the in the Audi of of my stomach. Oh, thank you. That's a wonderful way to think about it. <laughs> oh, it's it's stuck in your hernia even more. I was yeah, thinking of your belly button. That made no sense. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, the hernia starts in my belly button, so that makes sense. Oh, okay. It all comes together then. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, just get yourself a cork. That'll fix it right up. Yeah, yeah. I think right? So. That's what the doctors do, isn't it? Yeah, they 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 put a cork in it. <laughs> well, I think we should too. <laughs>